Welcome back. Three city parks and a recreational facility will soon be getting some much needed renovations. The city council approved a $900,000 construction contract for the multi-site park renovations project. One of the parks involved is the Crest Street Park located just off Durham Freeway at 2503 Crest Street. The site work we're doing at Crest Street Park um, is predominantly uh, has to do with sidewalk, um, parking lot repair and improvements. We're also going to be repaving the existing basketball court and restriping that. Inside the building, we are going to be making some subflooring repairs, new flooring, uh, new ceiling tiles. We're going to be reconfiguring the bathrooms so that they meet accessibility codes. Um, and a host of other minor repairs to that building. And that building is the W.I. Patterson Center. Another park benefiting from the project is Forest Hills Park, located at 1639 University Drive. We will be, again, doing site work and building repairs. The site work is predominantly uh, walkway and parking lot repairs and improvements. We will be replacing some worn out uh, playground safety surfacing. Uh, we will also improve accessibility into the clubhouse. Um, in the clubhouse, we will uh, be doing a host of repairs. Some of those are re-roofing the building. We will be repainting inside and out, uh, new energy efficient windows and doors, um, and, oh, and a new HVAC system. The third park included in the project is the Garrett Road Park, located at 6815 Garrett Road. At Garrett Road Park, uh, we have site repairs and just a few minor building repairs. The site repairs will involve uh, uh, walkway improvements and we will be replacing old playground equipment with new equipment. So that'll be a a nice thing to see at that park. We've got a lot of outdated play equipment. Uh, building repairs will include some roofing repairs at the picnic shelter, um, some bathroom, uh, restroom repairs to the uh, restroom building. In addition to those parks, improvements will also be made to Spruce Pine Lodge, located at 2235 Bahama Road in Bahama. At Spruce Pine Lodge, we um, have uh, a host of building repairs. That is an historic log building. We're going to be repairing chinking on the outside, um, doing some electrical work, uh, replacing um, kitchen cabinets. We're also going to be reconfiguring bathrooms at that uh, park as well to meet accessibility code. Um, we will be redoing the ramp uh, into that building so that it meets accessibility code. And our site work out there will mostly involve walkway and parking lot improvements, as well as um, replacing old playground equipment with new equipment. The improvements to all the facilities are expected to be made by September. A significant improvement project is also now underway at Campus Hills Park and the IR Homes Recreation Center. The $1.2 million construction project will address needed repairs and improvements to the parking lot, toilets and locker rooms, plumbing, mechanical and electrical systems, and accessibility and drainage issues. The project is being paid for with 2005 bond funds. The City of Durham is joining with its sister city organizations of Cary, Raleigh, and Southern Pines and celebrating the opening of the Raleigh-Durham International Airport's Terminal 2. While the terminal itself opened in January, a dedication ceremony for the eight works of art located inside was held on February 10th. The art was chosen to reflect the theme of handmade and mind-made, illustrating elements of craftsmanship, technology, and science. In addition to the artwork, the nearly 1 million square foot terminal features modern architecture, 36 gates, and 40 shops and restaurants. Durham's very own NC Central University's Marching Sound Machine took the trip of a lifetime at the very beginning of this year. As you're probably well aware, the band got to play in the Rose Parade on New Year's Day in Pasadena, California. NC Central Chancellor Charlie Nelms offers a look back at that incredible experience for his students and his school. 
Hello, I'm Charlie Nelms, Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. I can't tell you how proud I was watching our marching sound machine round the corner onto Colorado Boulevard in their first performance in the Rose Parade. In that moment in the Pasadena, California sun, NCCU was introduced to the world. I applaud the efforts of band director Joram Reed, our students, staff, and the many supporters who helped make this trip a complete success. We're pleased to present you with a glimpse of their high-stepping style, courtesy of Los Angeles television station, KTLA. We welcome another band making its Rose Parade debut, the Marching Sound Machine from North Carolina Central University. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When their director took over the program in 2001, he wrote a 15-year list of goals. One of them was March in the Rose Parade. He did it, boy. He they are hot. It. That's not the only national recognition Durham is receiving these days. We'll show you why the city is being honored for its commitment to young people when City Hall this week continues. For every one of these spots, there are at least five to 24 others for you to use. Many folks think that people with disabilities are getting special treatment with these parking spaces, but it's really a safety issue, not a convenience. Many drivers backing out of a parking space can't see a person with a disability. Remember, accessible parking is a civil right built on safety. For more information, call the Americans with Disabilities Act Information Center at 800-949-4232. there. I just got to find that cross street. Whoa! Stop! Solid Waste Collection employees have the fifth highest fatality rate in the United States, but there are other people who care about them. He's my husband. He's my brother. He's my dad. He's my son. Be alert, watch the road, and slow down to get around. This message is brought to you by the National Solid Waste Management Association and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Welcome back. It may have been delayed due to bad weather in January, but city and county employees recently continued their tradition of joining together to remember the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. The two local governments hosted the sixth annual Martin Luther King Jr. Employee Observance at the First Presbyterian Church on February 16th. I commend you for not allowing ice and snow to become a cop-out in the recognition of citizen and patriot King who led the nation and the world in recognition of the human potential in all people 
and the necessity that we eventually become free of bigotry, inequality, and justice until the day that we become one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The event is held every year to offer employees a chance to gather and reflect on their roles as public servants. An idea emphasized by Reverend Dr. David Forbes Sr., the senior pastor of Christian Faith Baptist Church Incorporated of Raleigh. Dr. Forbes says public employees, elected officials, and members of the community at large need to continue to wake up and dream. Unemployment is three times as high for African Americans and Latinos. We need to wake up and dream. A lost generation has been necessary to address the disparity, the high number of African American boys and Latin American, Latino American boys being drafted into our prisons. We are spending more for prison facilities than we are in seeking to address the minds and the possibility of young people. We need to wake up and dream. Also during the program, the Durham City County Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award was introduced and presented to two of six finalists. Randy Trice was the county's recipient of the award and Angela Rigsby Brown was the city's recipient. Music for the program was provided by the City County Martin Luther King Jr. Mass Choir. The city is celebrating yet another honor. It's been named one of the nation's 100 best communities for young people. The recognition comes from the America's Promise Alliance. It identifies communities that are dedicated to ending the high school dropout crisis by helping young people overcome challenges to succeed. The community partnerships recognized during this event on February 9th are a major reason Durham is being honored. By forming support networks for at-risk youth, they are helping to create brighter futures for young people in Durham. That does it for this edition of City Hall This Week. Be sure and visit DTV8 on Facebook and Twitter to find out how you can tune into this show, City Life, and all the city's programming. You can also find us on demand on the city's website at durhamnc.gov DTV8. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us for City Hall This Week.